So I'm getting on with this panel and I've just started to do the wiring of the switches for now. I've just wired up the common ground. These switches will connect up to one of the Leo Bodner boards of course and you only need one ground wire. You don't have to run a separate ground wire from each switch. So we've got one tag of each switch basically daisy chained to the next one and then we have a single ground wire which will come out and go to the Bodner board. Then we're going to do one signal wire from, which is the yellow one from each switch. So we'll have ten signal wires and one ground. Then we have to do something similar for the LEDs. I'll do the LEDs after I've done this. Uh, the wiring, although they don't get wired up to the bottom of the board, they go to the Arduino. The principle is the same. We can daisy chain the negative tag of the LEDs and send one of those to the Arduino. The difference is they've got a polarity. The switches, it doesn't matter which tag you choose for the ground wire, the LEDs it does matter because they're they have a positive and negative terminal. So I'll get on with these signal wires now. The next thing after that is to, rather than just poke these wires straight into the Arduino, we're going to make the panel, as I did with the Bodner boards, make the panels detachable from the Arduino as well as, as the Bodner board. And to do that we've got uh, basically a crimp kit with various blocks, you may or may not be able to see this, which which will have pins, um, well sockets in, or pins, depending on whether I'm making a male or a female connector. So we make those, and those are crimp terminals, so I've got a crimping tool here. Can you see that? Let's try any of that out. And then we'll be able to take the panel away from the computer, detach the Bodner board umbilical connection and then detach the Arduino umbilical connection. So it's kind of complicated. That's a much better solution long term than just sticking the wires directly into the Arduino. That just leads to no end of heartache. So we'll crack on with these signal wires and then we'll be onto the LEDs. You know frequently when you're doing a project such as this, you get to a point where you, you kind of think it's become too fiddly that it can't possibly work. <laughs> and I'm at one of those points at the moment. You have to hang in there and trust um, that things will be okay. What, I, what I've done at the moment, if I just explain what I'm talking about, so I've gone to the LEDs at the moment. I've, I've prepared each of the LEDs, I've soldered the resistor onto the positive side and a long tail for the signal wire and I left the negative or the ground terminal just sticking up and now, now the fiddly part is I'm mounting these in the little cells that I've created in the back of the panel and the difficulty is getting them pointing in the right direction you know roughly in the centre of the, the panel I've just done that by you know using the, the world's most useful tool which is the cable tie. <laughs> I've used that for everything. And I've just put the first four LEDs in there. We've got two yellow ones in here and we've got two red ones in here. You can see they're not centered quite in the slots. But the trick is really to get them in there and then you can fine-tune them just by bending the wires. So the LED is basically just sitting on the end of the wire and you sort of bend it to point in the right direction. Once it's pointing in the right direction it's fairly robust, it's not going to move. So I'm just going to put them all in, wire them up and then I can do the final positioning. You can see I've now got the altitude alerter mounted on top of the new panel. That's pretty good. And I've tidied up the altitude alerter. I've, I've gone in and taken out that tracing paper behind the digital display. I've also put a couple of little partitions in to try and prevent too much bleed across between those LEDs. We'll see how that goes. Got a lot of the LEDs in place now. I've just done one that bears some remarks. This is uh, this is for the ice warning gauge which you may know it's a gauge that can be lit up with one of three colours and so I've made a cluster of LEDs for that with the three colours. So hopefully that's going to work out fine. That's going to go
basically just in here behind this top aperture and another unique one I'm going to be doing is the, the one for the left and right beta range indicators which are very small as I say I'm going to have two of those perhaps using the drinking straw method so crack on with that so there we go the construction is pretty much complete of the panel now there it is from the front and if I turn it around <laughs> You'll see what a bit of a rat's nest the back is. And we've got all these bundles of wire. You wouldn't imagine there'd be so many wires coming out. That's for the altitude alerter. That's the switches. And that's the LEDs. So they're all wired up now. And it's ready to go. Now it's not quite ready to go because I've got to, you know, the ends of these wires are all unfinished. So I've got to get this crimping tool into play next. And basically, I think I can just put pins on the ends of these, and then the pins, I think you can then just shove them into those connectors. If that's the case, then I should easily be able to test these. If I just attach the pins, then I can test them on the breadboard, just make sure all the lights are working, and then we'll be ready to go. I don't think we'll be doing that today. I might just check out a couple of the lights to round off the video you can see how they look and then next time we should be up and running so here we go just the last little experiment we can see a couple of the, the lights working that's a nav capture don't know which is which at the moment trim up auto feather arm Heading mode, wing ice, that's one of the wing ices, we've got three LEDs under that, don't forget. Heading mode again, <laughs> airspeed, indicated airspeed, hold, nav capture, so that's about it.